Hey, thanks for joining us today. What's your name? Um, I'm Rudy Bowling Sr. Perfect. Rudy, when you were with Braniff, what were your years of service and what did you do there? I went to work in August of 1966 until May of 1982, and then again for a short time at Braniff too. And uh, during those years, I worked as a cargo serviceman, a ticket um, passenger. Representative, customer service. Customer service uh -huh. uh, agent. Um, in, uh, and I worked in Love Field, DFW, um, Reno, Nevada, Austin, Texas. Up in Boston, I think, as well, right? Yeah, later, later but not for Brenna. Okay. And I worked as a manager, uh, or a, a supervisor, at Braniff Two, in stores. In at uh, DFW huh. after after the first bankruptcy. Uh, then I transferred to Kansas City, as a supervisor and eventually manager of stores in Kansas City at Braniff Two, and then endured the second. Brand of bankruptcy, and uh, after that, I went to Saudi Arabia, worked two times for the Hajj um, before I got a job that I could wanted to keep, and uh, then I uh, went to work for Southwest Airlines and spent 18 years there. You obviously have got aviation in your blood, so. Tell me about your memories of your very first time on an airplane, taking a trip and flying. The first time I flew on an airplane <clears throat> was about six months after I went to work as a cargo serviceman. I uh, was had just joined the Texas Army National Guard, and my first trip was to Carmel, California for Fort Ord for my basic training, and that was on an American Airlines flight to Monterey, California, which is a beautiful city. Uh, and uh, when I got out to the fort, it was desolate, even though it was on the coast. It changed where the fence was from Monterey to Fort Ord, and you knew you were on a military base. <laughs> Became very, very, Sterile and structured, or how did it change? Absolutely. Yeah. Very sterile and structured. <laughs> well, tell me, obviously, because that was after you started working at Braniff. Yes. What were some of the other memories you have? What do you remember most about your time at Braniff through all those cities and all those jobs? I have to say, and not to take something away from my wife, but I think the people that we worked with and I worked with over those years uh, in all those locations. It was all family. It was a brand of family. And, uh, and I was always proud of that. I, I wanted to go to work every day. Uh, and that's, looking back now, I'm thinking, but is that really true? And it was. You that, had bad days and you had good days at work, but I always looked forward to getting there because no day was ever the same. That wasn't, it was never something you had to do. It was something you got to do. Yes. No, that, that's wonderful. And I think everybody would strive for that. Um, when you started at Braniff, what were, that your first position again was? Cargo service. It was man. a cargo service manager. So. No, man. How was it, man, sorry. So what was your training that got you like prepared to do that job? So Braniff hires you and you go straight to training, I would assume. It was like two days. It was very, but this was at the end of the big hiring uh, surge after uh, Harding came in and painted the planes and we really started growing yeah. and started getting the new 727s. Uh, and it was just um, go out there and do the job. And it was, it was not as bad as say being hiring off the street and go to work as a ticket agent 
you, you know, you could you knew how to pick up a bag and put it on a belt or stow it in the airplane. Uh, so it was uh, it was fun too. So you started meeting people in that role and started networking. And yes. you know, and how long did you spend working on the ramp? You know, doing that position. Do you remember? About a year and a half. Okay. And I promoted to customer service agent. Okay. And worked uh, a little bit of air freight, uh, a little bit of the ticket counter, but I still uh, I enjoyed uh, being at the airline. It was a, it wasn't glamorous, but it was neat. It was exciting. Because every day was different. That was the one of the more exciting times in you know, Braniff's history, you know, with so much going on, and like you said, there was so much growth uh, happening. Yes. Um, you used to network and, and meet all these people. You were moving into new positions that put you more face to face with customers, but also more colleagues in inside the terminal and more members of management coming through. Yes. Were there members of you know the management staff or other colleagues you worked with that you really stand out in your mind still to this day? Try as I might, I can't elevate any one particular person above the others uh, because uh, kind of like the days, good days and bad days, and you know it depended on the, the work environment, and what was happening. Because sometimes you, you didn't like your bo- your bosses or your supervisors or uh, managers because but they were always supportive if you ever had an issue with a customer they were all, they always took your side but mediated it so that the customer was okay with it when it was over and you were too and we had a lot of good managers that could do that and supervisors and some of those customers were celebrities. Yes. Can you have a few that you remember? Uh, one in particular, uh, well, a couple of them. One was my first wife was a uh, Davis. Same country, junior? Country singer. Oh, okay. Uh, from Lubbock. And she wanted his autograph. And I took him on the cart when I was working in special services to meet his flight. And I asked him to sign a ticket jacket for me. And he did and wrote a little note. And that was good brownie points when I got home. I bet it was. Um, Another time, it was uh, Tony Dorsett. And I got him uh, alone and... uh, he signed a ticket jacket for me there also. Uh, so it was kind of kind of neat. But a, a lot of uh, celebrities came through, especially if you were working special services or when we got to Reno, uh, we had a lot of entertainers come through and some of them were really great people. So special services was a position that cared for, you know... Unaccompanied minors, uh, people with... Uh, Sometimes people with uh, special needs, special probably. needs, special needs, mm-hmm. uh, but probably uh, and celebrities, right? Uh, to get them to the gate, a place for them to go, because we had an office in there where they could go in and wait out of the public eye, uh, and that was kind of a neat, neat thing. I got to imagine some more of the neat things were some of the perks that you would get in working for an airline. One of those being able to travel. For free on your days off and things yes. like that. Um, did you ever get to fly uh, flying, you know, Brannis' first Boeing 747, the infamous November 601 BN? Yes, I did. But my real connection to that was that I was a, a gate agent at, at Love Field and I would work the midnight shift. So I would park the airplane when it came in from Honolulu in the morning. And it was pretty awesome to be standing on the ground, which at the time we didn't have the lights that told the pilot where to come. So you had to marshal him with flashlights. So I'm standing on the ground looking up, and I mean up and up, so that he could see me and then marshal him in and give him the, the sign that he's to, to lock the brakes. 
and then give him a sign that the chocks were in. And then at that time, somebody was in the jetway to drive it up. And then I'd climb up the jetway and, and uh, watch the passengers of the plane. Wow. Very heady. I mean, big airplane. You're a big guy. And I know standing there looking at that had to be, and you know, just awe inspiring. It, it was. The, the size. When we stuff. moved to DFW, we had the lights and we didn't have to get marshal from the ground. But I got to be there at the beginning. But you got to be there at the beginning. Yes. Well, tell me about some of your other uh, fun stuff. Like, you know, ad, was there an ad campaign of Brandon? They were known for that. Did you have a favorite one? I do have, but I'm having a senior moment. <laughs> I think you mentioned the, the When You Got It, Flaunt It campaign was yes. one of your more favorites. Yes, because I was there at the beginning of that, too. Yeah. With all the colors in the airplane. The, the jelly bean airplanes, and that was a heady time also in my career. I actually worked for Braniff International during one of the most interesting periods of aviation, commercial aviation, in this country. You More did. happened in those, those years and months that uh, dictated what it was going to be like in the future. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was very much an era of, you know, Truly, that was the literal jet set era. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I, a time that a lot of people long and wish that they could have done. So yes. um, you got to be part of it and make it happen. So while we're coming towards the end, um, do you have anything else that you'd like to share about your time with Brano? Yes, I, I have a story about a piece of equipment, ramp equipment. We had old baggage tugs that were probably 1940s vintage or at least early 1950s vintage and this was in 1966 and these old tugs had governors on them where we could uh, couldn't drive them faster than you know than we were supposed to on the ramp which was usually about 15 miles an hour but there was one particular tug that for some reason, it didn't have a governor on it, and it was fast, and everybody loved to drive that tug. Uh, but working evening shift, you had uh, other things that you needed to do. So at the end of the shift, uh, after most of the planes had come in, we would, part of the ramp crews would gather up all the baggage carts and take them to what they called the boneyard, which was down in a corner where the terminal bridges went out from the terminal to the gates. And you could go out to the North 40, which was the end of the terminal, and gather up all the baggage carts that were out there and run them down. And uh, that was a kind of a thing that you had, had to do every night. But this particular tug, it, equipment number was 555, so his nickname was Trickle, Triple Nickel. And it was neat. You'd always look for him when you went out looking for a tug to go get carts or go unload the airplane and take the bags to the claim area because you didn't, you didn't tote her along. You got a nice ride. People got to fight over that one. Yes. It was just, a, and it's something that I've always remembered all my life. That's a great memory. I bet on those hot nights, too, you were wanting the one that would go fast and get oh, the wind. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, thanks for your time, Rudy. It's a great story. My pleasure.